Hi, my name is Doug Powell, and I know why people jump out of perfectly good airplanes. Actually, as any skydiver would say, perfectly good airplane, there's no such thing. I am among the very few who have thrown themselves at the ground and missed, or at least sufficiently delayed the reunion. Most of my 70 or so jumps began the same way. A group of us gearing up for the adventure, putting on heavy duty harnesses, parachute packs, altimeters, helmets, goggles, etc. Next, we load into the plane. We sit down, buckle up, and the plane starts moving. Everyone's really pumped up. We're cheering, high-fiving. People are saying things like, surf's up. Airplane is a buzz of excitement, bravado, and chatter. As the engines roar, we leave the ground, and the scenery begins to recede in the window. About 10 minutes into our slow ride to altitude, a sort of dark boredom has set in. Veterans are usually napping, leaving the rookies oh so alone with their thoughts. The ground continues to get smaller and smaller as the altimeter needle winds inexorably upwards. At some point, the pilot turns and confides something to a nearby veteran who loudly yells, two minutes, with the, which a handful of voices echo. The plane wakes up and starts buzzing with activity again. All of us are doing last minute gear checks, planning exits, and getting ready. And then someone goes to the back of the plane and slides open the plexiglass door to the outside. The plane instantly fills with blustery wind and a hint of airplane exhaust. This is the moment that things get very real for people. This is also our opportunity to see a phenomenon my friends and I have come to call door face. It looks something like this. It is this moment where you realize two things. What you imagine this might be like has no relationship to what it's actually like and that you are committed. After all, skydivers say, when you get up to that door, no sounds an awful lot like go. Near the door, a little red light turns green, indicating that we're over our landing area, and people start leaving the airplane. With the airplane literally bouncing like a diving board with each departure, Everyone then moves one notch closer to that door and all of its terrible unknownness. Then the person in front of you vanishes and it's suddenly your turn. You enter the doorway, looking out into the incomprehensible vastness of the open sky, the wind buffeting you and the ground looking less high up and more simply unreal. One, two, three, and you're in free fall. Irrevocably committed. There are a lot of things that you could do at this point. Scream, howl, claw at the air, flap your arms, maybe turn and cast a longing glance back at the airplane. Sadly, none of these things will really change your situation. Scream all you want, the wind will only dry out your mouth. As it turns out, the most aerodynamically stable body position in free fall is achieved through relaxing. When you truly relax in free fall, your body naturally assumes the shape of an arch. Until you arch, you're unstable, control is difficult. After arching, it becomes stable, even graceful. Nothing you are likely to imagine could have prepared you for this. For 60 seemingly eternal seconds, you are simply in the sky, bathed in wind, with no churning stomach and no visual sense of velocity. 
you can see the horizon in every direction. The luminous Kobernhawk poetically described it as looking straight into the eye of God. Relaxed and with your eyes open, this is important, it is a profoundly beautiful, peaceful, humbling, and enlivening experience. It reminds me of when our son Owen was born. I freely admit to a little door face. Things happened much faster than the Lamaze class had led me to expect. I feel like we would have done a lot better with, ex with an extreme Lamaze class. And things got very real in the delivery room for all of us. But with a baby's cry, we were out of the airplane and into a new paradigm. And so was he. The only question was how to respond. This is always the question, isn't it? Life is filled with these transitions. We're always moving from one world into another. How do we respond? And, more, and most importantly, is our response aligned with our fears or aligned with our love? I suppose we can always howl, claw at the air, flap our arms, trying somehow to fly back up into that airplane. Or we can take the more graceful path. Accept, relax, arch, and appreciate the humbling beauty around, between, and within us. In every moment, this choice is ours. Friends, I assert that this community has already exited the airplane. None of us have been here before, facing this specific transition. But on the other hand, we've all been here before because we've all experienced transition in our lives. May we always proceed forward together and aligned with our love. Amen.